Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Hashtag Clocked In with me, your host, Jordan Edwards. I'm thrilled to have you tune in as we dive into the dynamic world of productivity, success, and stories of incredible individuals who've mastered the art of getting things done. Whether you're commuting, hitting the gym, or just relaxing at home, this podcast is the go-to source for inspiration and actionable tips to level up your productivity game. I'm on a mission to unravel the secrets of those who seem to effortlessly manage their time and achieve their goals. So if you're ready to clock in and unlock your full potential, you're in the right place. We've got a lineup of amazing guests, industry experts, and thought leaders who will share their insights and strategies to help us crush your to-do list and make the most out of every moment. Get ready to get inspired, motivated, and equipped with the tools you need to supercharge your productivity. This is Hashtag Clocked In with Jordan Edwards. Let's dive in. Hey, what's going on, guys? We've got a special guest today. We have Julie Muse. She was born and raised in North Georgia and still resides in an area in a town called Delanga. She has very humble beginnings where her family taught her the importance of hard work and integrity. Julie Muse has chosen real estate investing as her path to financial success. She specializes in purchasing properties directly from sellers using strategies such as wholesaling, fix and flip, as well as rental properties. Julie has been in real estate since 2013 and has never looked back. Julie has been involved in over 1,600 real estate transactions and continues to close deals every month. Currently, she has profited over $10 million flipping and wholesaling houses, Julie is an owner and partner driven where they have helped entrepreneurs understand the real estate business through one-on-one training, live daily training calls, and university of content. Partner driven shows investors how to find deals if the property meets their criteria and they will fund the deal with their capital and splits profits with the partners 50-50. You don't hear that too often. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Showing individuals how to invest in real estate full-time and live the life that they're truly passionate about. Julie also owns a real estate investing app called Deal, deal driven, where investors can look up properties nationwide as well as market to property owners directly from their applicate from this application. And most importantly, Julie is married to Brian Muse, and together they have four children and one grandchild. Her family is her rock and the biggest blessing and achievement in her life. Julie, well, well, yes, Jordan, thank you so much for um, that wonderful, warm welcome. I'm excited to be here today on um, this this special edition. Um, I'm beyond humbled to be here, um, and I look forward to get into what we're getting into today. Absolutely. Yeah, we're super excited to have you on the Clocked In podcast. So, Julie, wh- where does your story start? Where- well... Um, I, yeah, I guess, you know, where's your story start? Like, where was I born? No, I'm just kidding. So, um, you know, I know this is a a business podcast, but, um, you know, I'll tell you, like when I started, um, working years ago, I did like come out of high school. I did not go to college. Oh, wow. Um, I college just was not a path for me, um, nor was it a financially something I could do. Right. My mother I, is a custodian. My dad's a mechanic. And it's like, OK, if you want to go to college, good for you. But you got to pay for it. Right. So, so I was like, OK, I'll go to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, Julie, just to just to start off like that is a very intelligent decision because I I have this conversation a lot with people where they're like, yeah, I have a hundred thousand dollars in student loans. And I sit there and I'm like, is that the responsibility of the child or the parent for pushing the college? If you have the transparency and you can, because it sounds like you grew up pretty quick at 18. It's like, you make that decision. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I actually graduated high school a year early. Um, (laughs) And, (laughs) and I, I mean, my dad always like really valued hard work. Um, I watched my parents do it every day. So as soon as I got out of the high school, I went to work for Coca-Cola. Um, and I love working there. Right. Um, I was like the only female, um, at that area that did like merchandising. So, you know, the people that put it on the shelves, um, stock everything, get them off the truck. So it was a very physical job, but I was so excited to be able to work for Coca-Cola, right? Then um, I um, did a few other things over the years, but um, before real estate, I actually ran a lawn care company. Um, Oh, wow. 
Yeah, we had about 6,500 clients at this lawn care company, and I had somewhere between 23 to 27 um, technicians, right? Uh, Oh, wow. So, you know, for for 10 years, I built somebody else's business, Um, and I- Oh, so from- so from Coca-Cola, you ended up proceeding to go on a couple of different jobs and then ended up working at for this lawn care company. Exactly. Yeah. Building out the team and everything. Yeah. I mean, it was a pretty for that type of industry, it was a pretty large business in Atlanta, um, really for the amount of customers that we had. So, I mean, I was working there 70, 80 hours a week. Oh my God. I mean, and I've made good money. You know what I mean? What I've considered good money, you know, 60 to $70,000 to somebody that's 28, 29 years old with no college yeah. experience was pretty good, right? That's a lot um, of hours, though. <laughs> it was. And and actually, um, I had my first child, Taylor, um, when I was 20, actually eight days oh, before wow. I turned 21. <laughs> oh, my so, God. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of responsibility. It was. I mean, it's, you know, I literally, when I flew the nest, I flew the nest, you know what I mean? There there was no like, hey, you know, I'm not on my feet. Let me borrow my money from my parents. You know, my dad's like, once you move out, good luck, baby. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be here to mentally support you. I'm a, you know, a good father, but don't count on me to, (laughs) I'm not going to be paying your cell phone bill, your car insurance or whatever. Um, Yeah. That's, and I think that's one of the things that provides happiness at a very young age. Cause if you can actually support yourself and not sticking to this, keep taking handouts, like we're seeing people take handouts until they're like 30 years old at this point. Yeah. It's incredible. So, like, get out there on your own is, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Like, to me, there was no, like, I never thought that I could do that, nor that I ever would. I felt like I lived such a life even before 30, right? But, you know, at the same time, Jordan, um, I learned a lot of lessons throughout those years about business. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was forced to learn business by actual application, not necessarily through school, right? More trial and error. Um, but there was a catalyst point at working at that company um, and a catalyst point in my life. Okay. Um, actually, in the span of about three months, I went bankrupt. I lost a, uh, I had a miscarriage. Oh my God. I quit my job <laughs> all at one, all this happened within a three month period. And, and here's why on the work side, and I, well, I want to preface it by saying like, don't say poor me because I got myself in those situations, right? A lot of us always want to blame somebody else. I went bankrupt because I didn't know how to use money correctly. Do you know what I mean? I, I use money to make myself feel good, not to work for me. Yeah. And I, I love the accountability because no matter any place we are at any certain point, it's always what our decisions were the past five years. Mm-hmm. So if you look up and you got this, like currently now you have this big real estate portfolio and it's, it's like, wow, how'd you do that? Well, five years ago, I had the intuition to start. <laughs> like yeah. I had. So run us through, I mean, if you're open to it, run us through some of those difficult, like what led to the bankruptcy? What was the, was the job not paying enough? Like, was it like, what was happening? Um, no, it wasn't. The job wasn't paying enough. I had my own house. Yeah. Um, I was in a terrible relationship. Um, I was partying too much. Um, I'm embarrassed (laughs) to say that, but like I had to grow up so fast. I felt like. Um, I didn't like, I didn't have that party stage. Do you know what I mean? I had a baby. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you know no, what I mean? That's like, huge. That is, that is massive. Like, I don't think many people comprehend that most that college experience of 18 to 22. And then with the MBA to 24 is like, yes, people are in school, but at the same time, like you have a lot, a lot of free time and a lot of people spend that time partying. So if you miss out on that, even if you don't do that, there's some people who lean towards, did I miss out? Like, do I have to do that again? Like, did Mm -hmm. did I not get that experience? And I I completely understand that. So, I mean, I think being in that situation, I just made bad decisions. I'm not proud of it. I just made poor decisions that left me that way. But 
on the work side, I'll tell you what um, really made me like I didn't like a lot of people. You'll hear them. They're like, you know what? I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know. I didn't always know that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I mean, my dad literally had the same job from the time that he got out of um, the army up until like three weeks ago. He retired from the one job he had his whole life. So for me, in my mind, I only knew what I knew. So I thought, think, okay, I'm going to get with a company. I'm going to become a high earner. They're going to yeah. respect me. They're going to give me retirement. Well, here's what happened. The, the second pregnancy is I was working for this company and I still was working that 60, 70 hours a week, right? Oh my God, yeah. Well, I went to the doctor and he's like, Julie, like you, 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 you've got to slow down. Right. And I'm like, okay. So I went to the owner of the company, Jordan. And I was like, Hey, listen, um, I kind of, I don't need to be on complete bed rest, but he's telling me that the most I need to work is 20 hours a week. You know what I mean? And I've just got to make sure that, that everything's stable. Cause I'm sure he was seeing that like the pregnancy was not going, away. going, going away. as according. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So he looked at me after 10 years after like, when I tell you, like, like I built this company and gave everything that I had to give to somebody else. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this was my thing. Um, I've made the millions of dollars. I was the one that was there first. I was the one that was there the latest. And that man looked at me and said, well, that's a shame. I guess I'm going to have to adjust your salary based off of your new hours. Wow. So he, he said that to me and like this thing went off in my mind. And, and honestly, if you can imagine the cuss words that were going on in my mind, I'm like, no, 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 no amount of money. I was already like in this bad place, right? I was imagine like I was like at this catalyst point where everything was going wrong. All this happened. I'm like, this is not worth it. Like, this is not worth it. This is not what God had in store for me. Like, I know that I can create and do these things. There's no reason why I can't. Julie, what are you doing? It was like, literally, I got slapped in the face. So I quit. Well, I, yeah, no, I don't want to interrupt, but that it's, it's incredible. And people don't understand that, that there's this false sense of security. Uh, sometimes they think that the W-2 is very safe. And in some cases it is, but in other cases, it's you only have one stream of income. So it can be a little scary. And when I say one stream, I mean, like, you might only, it's like you only having one client. It's like mm -hmm. you're putting all your eggs in one basket and you're just hoping. So like, and you can see if the respect isn't reciprocated, you feel horrible. And I say this because I think the audience can really take from the fact that we we pigeonhole ourselves sometimes because they get leverage on us. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a story about how where you are currently doesn't have to be where you're going to end up. Mm -mm. And yeah, just continue on. Incredible. Well, you ever heard like the saying, you got to go backwards before you can go forwards? Absolutely. So, you know, actually on that day, I made a decision to completely change my life. I'm like, you know what? You, you've you got a daughter right now, right? Um, I know he's going to his dad's every other weekend, you know, or we actually had shared custody with my daughter. So I had a lot of free time. He was a good father, my, you know, um, yeah. but saying I had to go backwards to go forwards. I lost the house. Um, my dad obviously is a mechanic, so he has a mechanic shop. I literally lived in the, in a room in my dad's mechanic shop that literally had one of those big white sinks in it, like yeah. where they wash their hands. I put, I had a click clack. Do you know what a click clack is? No. Um, have you ever seen like those futon beds in college? I call them a click clack. Of course. Click yes, them down yes. And click them back. So I'm like, yes, those yes. foods. So I had that. Um, that was it. 
I mean, I lost my car. I lost, I mean, not homeless because my I had there to go. And then when my daughter was there, she stayed down at my parents' house, which was on the same property, right? So we were still, we would, every night she would hang out with me till it was time to go to bed. Then I'd go tuck her into bed down there, you know, in my parents' house. And still didn't understand um, where, where and what I wanted to do. Right. And what, at what age is this where all this started to occur? 30. 30 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So essentially, you know, I'm homeless. I'm literally mowing people's grass, picking up scrap metal, like just to eat, um, just to, you know, kind of pay my yeah, bill. Survive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I saw this ad on Craigslist, strangely enough. That's how this first started. Um, but I remember the day I said, I'm not going to work for someone else. I saw my daughter go into the school bus and like literally my knees hit the ground. And I thought, Julie, this is not, this is not what you've got to be teaching your daughter. You are not giving her what she deserves. I didn't realize back then that I wasn't giving myself what I deserved either. But it like for me, my why from the very beginning wasn't necessarily me. It was I'm embarrassed. You know, yeah. what are you going to go to school and tell your kids? Oh, my mom lives in a shack and she mows grass for money. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want it to be like that. So, I, yeah, no, I love how you got leverage on yourself um, by taking on another perspective. And a lot of the time we don't even think about this, but you literally took on your kid's perspective of how is he in or how is he or she in school and you're like that's huge that's huge not a lot of people can do that yeah and then it was a wake-up call yeah it was like we gotta get going yeah exactly I'm like I'm not getting any younger because like I, I have to like literally start over again like I was 18 and I'm like oh my god the last 10 years I messed up but I saw this <laughs> ad on Craigslist about real estate investing <clears throat> um, and, and the gentleman that I'm business partners with now was my first mentor in real estate. And yeah. the ad basically just said something to the effect of, um, like learn real estate investing, right? Come help me make some calls, help me do some marketing. And I went to meet with them knowing that this was, I did get paid a little bit, but it was more of like an internist job. And yeah. I was like, you know, I heard people say, you know, sometimes if you can't afford to pay a mentor, you need to work it off. Like I was just now starting to hear these things yes. that, that like you and I now, all these things, we hear them over and over again. People don't hear this stuff over and over again. We're in different circles. So we're hearing these life antidotes. So I did that. Right. Um, yeah. I literally, um, started with him that many years ago. It was funny, actually. Um, I went for the interview and I got there and I'm like, dude, I could do everything he's talking about. Like, I am going to kill this position. I'm going to be the best person that ever like worked for this guy. Right. So I get back home and I don't know if you remember Craigslist, but like yeah. you could refresh the ads. Right. I get home and this joker refreshes the ad on Craigslist. Really? Do you know what that tells me? Obviously, he's not going to hire me or he would not refresh the ad looking for somebody else, right? Yeah. Well, again, I've got nothing to lose, but I had this feeling like I love the idea of this. <laughs> so I call him and I'm like, hey, I'm just following up for today, you know, da, 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 da. and he's like, you know, I just don't think we're a good fit. And he hangs up the phone. I call him right back. Again, I have nothing to lose. And I say, you are making the biggest mistake of your life by not having me come work for you. I am the best person that is ever going to walk through your door. And I'm sorry you're making this mistake. And he says to me, okay, I'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's wow. how I got started in real estate straight. It's a crazy story. I always like Peter and I, Bexelman, we're like literally best friends now. And I'm like, if we just look back on those days. He's like, I cannot believe you had the gumption to call and tell me that. And I'm like, well, when you got nothing to lose, you're pretty ballsy, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, what made you have that conviction? What made you have that? Because that, that's incredible. 
I mean, you know, he was telling me about real estate wholesaling, about like putting something under contract and assigning that contract to an end buyer. So you you put under contract for this amount and some you have the equitable interest. Somebody picks it up at a higher amount and you make the money in the middle. Yeah. And then, I don't know. There's just something about that. I'm like, I can talk to people. You know, he was saying, OK, well, if you've got a good personality, if you're used to talking to people, this is perfect <sighs> business. And I'm like, that's me. That's me, <laughs> you know, and I just, I, I don't know. There was something that that day that I just thought, this is just what I'm going to do. Like, I didn't even do any research. And the thing I love about it is you had so much conviction and like, think about it. If he said no, you do it again. You find somebody else. Like there's someone that's going to want to work with that type of mentality because Peter's not stupid. Like, with that much with that much conviction and that tone of like calling them out being like you're making a mistake okay now i saw a different side of julie that mm-hmm. i didn't see maybe in the interview but now i see what she's capable of on the phone which is yeah. pretty much what he got yeah yeah <laughs> so you know i mean that was 10 years ago um uh i became the ceo of a company we got the the company to where we were closing a deal a day we had over 50 wow. employees um and now since then i own multiple business i'm not in that same financial state and you know all the negative stuff is just a part of the story right it's just a, a part of the so, story it's the past absolutely yeah so i just want to bring it up because like when people hear that, they're just like, oh, wow, Julie, like 10 years, like 10 years is a long time. But what was like that progression of like working with Peter? And then what was really the transference of like, now I'm financially, I feel like I'm very set. Cause I know today, like before this podcast, you were like, oh, come to one of my houses. And like, people don't think of houses like that, Mm -hmm. especially people who like lose their house. Like, so mm-hmm. where did that mindset even come that you're like, we can convert this, we can make this happen, we can make this real? Well, I'll tell you, that's um, that's a hard question because the, the, the thing that nobody talks about is imposter syndrome. 100%. Um, so when I first started like becoming successful, because when you're in that stage, it's not like, oh, yay, let me go make some money. It's, hey, I'm so far behind, even to get to zero is a good thing, right? <laughs> well, I, you know, started doing well. Um, and, you know, one thing, um, one catalyst of success that I would like to mention it is being able, imagine yourself going or any of the listeners here, um, and this is how most Americans lives, and people on the outside would not consider this success. I This is when I decided I was successful. I took my my daughter on vacation, okay, for a week to the beach. I did not have to put any of it on. um, I didn't have to look at my bank account before I went. Not that I had an extreme amount of money at that time, right? I didn't have to say, okay, let's drink water when we go out to dinner because mommy don't want to pay $2.25 for a Coke. You know, I don't know why that blows out for me. Like growing up, I could never have drinks at a restaurant. Like you have to have water. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm going to make sure she gets sweet tea or Coke if she wants it. I know that's terrible health advice, guys. But (laughs) um, So I went on vacation. We did roller coasters. We went to water parks. I get home, and I still wasn't worried about paying my bills. To me, that was my first taste of success. Really just being able to do normal things without robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, that for me was like the first, like, Man, I'm really starting to do something now. And most Americans can't do exactly what I just said. But the freedom behind just doing something like that is so mentally and spiritually fulfilled when you're not laying at night, like laying in the bed at nighttime when there's nobody else around, the lights are off, and you close your eyes and you worry about money. And that that terrible feeling just just goes away and to not have that not that I at that time I could afford like a Lamborghini or something that's not even a dream of mine (laughs) but that was the first I guess taste of success the problem was getting from there to the next level 
Well, yeah, let's just take a moment there. And I think it's so good that you set your parameters on what success is. And parameter, the reason I say that is because some people are like, success is if I get a house and a car and a picket fence and this and that, and that's what will make me happy. But it was more of an internal game, which I think is so much more powerful where you're like, I can go. It doesn't matter what the activity is, but it's more that I can hang out with my daughter and not have to be like water only. I don't want to be restrictive. I want to be in abundance. And the other thing you brought up is so true. When you're in that financial burden, the stress that goes on in your headspace to your decisions become desperate. Now, like you said, the robbing thing, like you get in a very desperate mentality and it's not you yourself. It's every single person. If you're in a financial burden, you're going to be like, yo, you got 20 bucks. You got a hundred bucks. You got this, you got that. Like, where can I make a deal? Where can I make this happen? And like, that's sometimes good to incentivize people, but at the same time, that's not healthy if you're like really looking to build something long term, because then you're constantly on everyone and then you're ruining relationships instead of just providing value. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, love that. I mean, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, there's stages financially, right? Because you can't go from, Growing up, having one mentality to just having this abundance lifestyle, a lot, lot like this abundance mentality that yeah. doesn't just I'm going to read a book and it just happens like that. <laughs> I mean, like people are like, oh, OK, I, today I decided to have an abundance lifestyle. No, like you have to reprogram your mind. And that took me a minute. So I, I guess, suffered from what's called imposter syndrome. I. Every like I would literally have dreams in the middle of the night that everything I had like was gone away and I was back working at the lawn care. Wow. Company. Like like literally in my like I would say things, but my mind didn't believe them because yeah. it, it wasn't that I didn't have the skill set, that I wasn't great at what I was doing. It was that I felt like I was an imposter in my own body and in my own life. Yeah. You know, like Julie, you never, you never had these things. You never, you know, was able to do any of this stuff. You know, this is a short lived thing. You just got lucky. Like I really felt wow. like that, you know? So um, that was a hurdle to cross in itself was, was believing that, you know what? I deserve this. I worked hard for this. I have the ability to do this, you yeah. know, and it's, it's a simple concept, but so, so huge. Yeah. So how did you get over this changing it? Cause I can imagine that there's people on the call now that are, or that are going to listen to the recording that are, un, that are probably in a similar state where mm -hmm. they might've gotten a little bit more money than they've ever had before. And they're just like, do I take the vacation? Do I deserve this? Am I going to lose it all? Like, how do I not? Because when you get to that space, now you're in scarcity and you don't even want to go invest money. You don't want, you're just like, save money, save money. Because I don't know where it's going to go. So how, how do you overcome that? Well, I could tell you looking at it now, if you ask, if somebody asked me that question, Jordan, and it was anybody that you, I'd say, first of all, take that vacation. <laughs> Because money isn't doesn't really mean anything. Time is what means something. And yeah. when you start getting a little bit older, um, you can always make more money. You can never get time back. So yeah. what money does for me is it buys my time back. Yeah. So, but you've you've got to believe in what you're doing. Like I probably already did 600 real estate transactions and I still felt that way. You know, that's really? what was funny about it. It wasn't even like, Oh, can I afford to go on this vacation? It was like, I was already a millionaire. <laughs> I just like literally, I couldn't believe that I'd done it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is all just going to get snatched out from underneath me again. And it's probably just things that happened in my life that led me to believe that. But, you know, really, I had to just convince myself, this is not luck. Yeah. You know, it's funny, you know, how hard work and luck goes together. I'm like, I could do this again. I could do this over with. Right. And, yeah. you know, like, like even now what this business has done for me, real estate and the other businesses that I own is for me, you know, I'm not necessarily one for big flashy things, even though I think some things are cool. I've been able to buy my mother a house, my mother-in-law a house, my sister-in-law a house, my daughter a house. 
Um, I've got multiple homes that I just, I literally don't even live anywhere. I literally just move around and on a whim when I say, you know what? I want to go to my lake house in Louisiana, just pack my bag and I'm gone. Or I want to stay in a cabin here. I'm just going to pack my bag and be gone. I'm not ever going to let anything hold me back ever again. And I'm going to do what I want to do every moment that I have. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean I'm lazy and that I don't work. I work a good bit, but now I'm doing it. Now I've learned to grow a business where my business works for me and I'm not trading my time for money anymore. Yeah. My money buys back my time. So when I want to go on vacation with my granddaughter or my daughter or my mother or my aunt, like she just um, retired from Walmart after like 35 years. She's like, Julie, let's go to Vegas in November. And I'm like, girl, let's go. Do you know what I mean? Like there was no like even when my aunt asked me, Julie, let's go to Vegas because I retired. There wasn't even like, oh, what am I doing in November? Do I got to know? No. Okay. Sandra, my aunt Sandra, I'm like, let's go. We will go to Vegas, you know, which is kind of a weird thought, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's that freedom of no restrictive thoughts of like, do I have time off? Do I have this? Can I be here? Do I have to be in a place? Do I have anything? And like, that's very freeing. So the one thing like we were talking about beforehand is like, you purchased your first house in your 20s. And like, that didn't end up being the best experience how did you overcome this to like go you just named all five or six people you bought houses for like how did that transition how did that how did you overcome that like what was the mindset that you had to have to reach that abundance mentality really i think it was trying things over again and i really even though i love my family i love my friends from all the years but i had to change the circle of people i was around oh wow um, I know um, everyone says, okay, yeah, I get it. Change the circle of people you are around. But you can't grow when you're not in a place where people are further along than you. You know the antidote. Be around the five people. Be Look at the five people you're the most around and your income is going to match those people, right? Like yeah. I was around people that that I love to this day, Uh, And still have relationships with that when I would share my ideas, it was like, no, Julie, you're stupid, right? You know, or I had a family member that whenever I got into real estate and I was doing well and I was talking about buying this house, he goes, you can't do that. Just four years ago, you were homeless. You know what I mean? Like that get a, get away from people that have a negative attitude. That does not mean that you don't stop loving them. But don't accept their advice when they're not further along than you are. And that could be spiritually, too, not just financially. Right. Yeah. So absolutely. Keep going. Yeah. So um, like last night. So I'm looking to buy 29 franchises here in Georgia. Right. Okay. And so I went to dinner with uh, Ben and Peter. Ben actually is one of the co-founders of our app, Deal Driven. Right. Okay. So we're just sitting here at dinner talking and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, buy these, these franchises, do this. And he's like, man, that's so cool. Julie, like you totally should do that. That's going to work great. It's so funny. I mentioned that same conversation to one of my cousins, like over the weekend. And they're like, that, that's stupid. That's not going to work. You know <laughs> I mean? Like, and I'm thinking, dude, like, you don't know anything about me. <laughs> you, well, yeah, you know because no, but like, I mean they love me. Yeah, yeah, because they're related. No, but I mean it's such a true point of like I've had that same experience. We would throw an idea to someone, and they're like, "Doesn't seem safe. Doesn't seem like a good idea." And they, it's because they love you and they want to try to keep you safe. Some people they just don't understand what they're saying, and there's other people who are there and they want to push you. And honestly, that's why I do the podcast. Like yeah. you just told me that you wanted to have 29 franchises. I'm like man, I'm thinking small, like I got to get bigger, (laughs) but that's why, because in the podcast, I can get people around my circle who usually wouldn't like, I don't know that we would have crossed paths without this podcast. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's a major value. Mm -hmm. It's a major value. Well, I mean, I think it goes back to like, for the listeners that are listening to this right now, 
Guys, you are making such a better decision to be listening to Jordan than to be wasting your time watching Netflix. <laughs> like, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, every once in a while, I love a good show, right? But what you put in your mind is can get you to the next level. So you've got to be very selective to what you let your ears hear and your mind, your mind hear, right? If you, if you allow yourself to hear negativity, right? Or not free thinkers, you are going to subconsciously be like that. So making a decision, you know, for the listeners that if you're listening to this right now, congratulations, you know, more than 99.9% of the rest of people that you spend your time <clears throat> with information that's positive, right? With an, yeah. abund with an abundance mindset. A absolutely. And uh, Ed Milet, he's done very, very well. He's hundreds of millions of dollars. And basically he said, um, the only thing that can change you in 12 months is the people you meet, the things you listen to, and the, the stuff you might watch. Yeah. Those are the only things that can change you. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, that that sounds like silly. It does. Yeah. And then you really sit there and think about it and you're like, okay, we're just people. We might listen to podcasts and we might watch documentaries or TV shows or movies or whatever, but that's the only thing that can change us. And it's like, or it's the books we read. And it's like, mm -hmm. wow, that's really fascinating mm -hmm. because then you realize you're in control of everything. You just have to get around the right people mm -hmm. to get those exciting ideas. So yeah. it, it made your difference. Um, I, I kind of want to dive into what you brought up about Peter and partner driven. Um, when you started with Peter, that was the same working environment. How did you end up getting to the partnership level with him in regard to, because you said after the lawn care that you wanted to be a partner, you said you wanted to, you didn't know what that meant, but you wanted to be, be in control of your own life. Yeah. And, and how'd you go about that with Peter? Cause obviously the dynamic didn't start like that. You know, I guess, you know, at that time, um, I took the same mentality that I always had. And I'm like, I'm just going to work harder and be better than somebody next to me. And, yeah. and I know that's like a cocky thing to say, but like I can perform like at very, very high levels. I do very well under stress. So Peter, even at that time, Peter had, um, came out of the 08 crash, he was just building himself back up again, right? It wasn't even like he had more than one or two people at his office working. He was scraping to get right back on top again, right? Yeah. So um, I went in, started at one position. Then I've always been a manager, right? Or a supervisor. So okay. I hired people below me. I supervised their actions over and over and over again to where we built a multi, multi million dollar real estate investing company. We had 18 locations across the United States. Um, and I was the CEO of that company, right? Wow. So I grew from like answering the phones to being a CEO, <laughs> um, which I don't know. I felt like I deserved it, right? You know, because we we worked hard and we we put this together. Then people started asking me, Peter was a mentor as well, not only, a, so he was mentoring folks. Well, the next thing I know, people start asking me, like, how did you do it? Right? Yeah. Like, how do I even grow this from this level to this next level? How do I start from zero? Um, and I, I felt like I was pretty good at conveying how real how to make money in real estate, right? The things that you've got to do. Yeah. Well, then him and I one day was like, I know this is crazy. Like, we want to do more real estate deals, but you and I are working way too much. Like, we're still trading time for money. When you've got 18 locations and you're doing this amount of deals, could you imagine the stress that, that you're under and the amount of hours you have to work to make something like that happen? Because the overhead, we were, yeah. We were still trading, trading money for time. and. I don't even remember why we were having this conversation. And he's like, we've got to think of a way to where we can complete the same amount of real estate deals, if not more, but not have to do all of this. You know what I'm I saying? Love, I love asking the better questions because there, there has to be a way. Like 
for example, when I was doing, um, I was doing coaching and I was doing one-on-one with people and they would uh, reschedule, change, cancel, and it was just way too much time. So then I transitioned everybody into a group dynamic because then if they don't show up, there's still other people who will show up. Yeah. And it, it, there's literally a two millimeter switch that changes everything. So I'm glad you asked that question because it makes everything so much more effective. Yeah. I mean, and that's a, a catalyst point too in a business is that, yeah, we were making all this money, but I still couldn't travel like I wanted to because if I wasn't <laughs> there to manage the people, you know, um, cats away, the mice will play, you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah. So we transitioned and and lost money for several years there to make this transition, right? Yeah. Because more was not more. It meant your overhead was more. So now yeah. – I was waking up and every week I was having to make $75,000 payrolls and bills every week. That's so, yeah. not a fun thing. That is not a fun thing to have to worry yeah. about. Yeah. So I just kind of want to slow it down for everyone. So just basically what ended up happening with Julie and correct me if I'm wrong, but essentially as, as they were expanding, they were hiring more people. So they had to pay out more money, which means they had to get more deals. If they didn't get those deals, then they still had to pay out those people. And it was, it's, it's a stressful environment. Yeah. <laughs> if you, and, and bigger is not more. No, like you, you were just saying right. there. It, it is. You want to build a, you want to build a business that works for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we both decided like, you know what, we could literally do the, do deals again, like we did before. We're literally making the same amount of money. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but now, I mean, what is it that we get to say we're cool and we got all these these different locations? locations. I'm yeah. like, I'm okay with not being cool. Like, I've never been cool <laughs> in my life anyway. Like, I don't <laughs> really care what people think. I don't need to tell people, oh, I've got 18 locations. I'm doing 40 deals a month. Well, if I, I, was, if I wasn't making any more money, why would I do that? I love that you separated the ego of, Hey, we had 18 locations. You know what I mean? Like that, that's the ego where it's like, I'm on a power trip and we have to control everything and have everything. But in reality, is it better for my life? No. Mm -hmm. So then change it. I love that. Yeah. And that's a, that's a very difficult decision. Mm -hmm. So we, um, scaled back. And we're like, oh my gosh, so we're mentoring these folks, right, on real estate investing, and that's doing very well. But w- there's one problem in real estate, and you know, I don't know if Peter mentioned this on the on the podcast. Is when you hire a mentor in real estate, right? The yeah. success rate is somewhere maybe like three to four percent. Okay, um, I didn't know that. Well, like that's embarrassing, dude. Like if you're yeah. a mentor and you're excited that three to 4% of the people you work with are successful, dude, that's embarrassing. That's like a doctor going in to do heart surgery and being like, well, you know what? Three to four people survived this heart surgery, you know, <laughs> even though the other 96 are dead. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's not a cool thing. Yeah. So I did not, I never loved the action of, of mentoring and not judging results, okay? Yeah. Because so, but there's a lot of things people need. They need to understand how to do it. They need technology and they need funding. So we were like, okay, so what if we provide the technology, we provide the best experience, customer experience for our partners, like to the tune of nine hours a day, I have master coaches available 100% wow. of the time, okay? Yeah. And what if we put up the money on these real estate deals and split profits with them 50, 50, like we take away all the excuses. Yeah. I'm still doing real estate deals like I did before, but I don't have, I, I, it's, it's not the same environment as it was. Do you know what I mean? So now it's, more yeah. Like Cause now instead of being, model. Yeah, instead of the overhead, now it's business partners who are going to pay for, everyone's going to make money together. And they're excited to be part with you because they're actually getting funded. Most of the time you pay 6000 10000 25000 100000 And they're just like, we'll do the deal for you. You can watch. And like, 
it, it's just different instead of it being like, let's hold your hand and like, let's work on this together. Yep. Yep. Um, and, 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 you know, that's why I feel like our model is, is so unique. Um, because like, even for me, real estate deals are still fun, but God, do you know what it's like to like, and you know, cause you do mentoring and things when somebody has an aha moment, right? Yeah. And when somebody quits their job and goes into real estate full time, now, by the way, they did all the work. They're the reason that they are there. But just to have the opportunity to be a part of somebody's life like that, I mean, there's no amount of money that replaces that feeling. When somebody calls you and is like, you know what, Julie, I hung up my coat. I can do this full time now. I can support my family. I can support myself in real estate now. And I'm wow. like, I'm just glad I was there to watch you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And I, I love it. It's such an incredible story. What you're telling me is just because 10 years prior, you were just just starting. And like, it, it really is inspiring that like, where you are today is not where you will be. And I, I think everyone should take note from Julie's story that like, where you are today is not where you have to be. Mm-mm. You can change your life. You're the hero in your own story. You can change it at any moment. You know, absolutely. I think a lot of people, um, and, and and I'm not trying to speak at you. Um, a lot of people feel like, well, this is the, this is the people say, this is the hand that God dealt me. Yeah. God doesn't deal limited hands. Oh, wow. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. God does not give you bad hands in life. Yeah. God will give you everything you deserve and you desire. Yeah. And it's, you know, when you start to think about it, it's almost like, am I really serving a greater purpose by not believing in myself? Yeah. Because you're built in his like image and now you, you, you know, I don't want to give it, give it all. And yeah. just because you've went something terrible, I've seen people be addicted to methamphetamines that, yeah. um, you know, one day decide not to do it anymore and go on to live incredible lives. Yeah. Who cares that you did something silly that you shouldn't have? You deserve to be forgiven and you deserve to forgive yourself. Allow yourself to forgive yourself because you know what? There's not one person that you're ever going to meet in life that did not make a dumb decision. Right? Right. Like it, that could be shoplifting. That could be any of these things like, or maybe you were dealt a hand of bad, you know, parental roles. At some point you need to let that stuff go because it's not going to carry you forward. You can't blame others the rest of your life, you know? And yeah. I see, I see that a lot. Like even people that go through a bad, you know, things and they continue to blame that, uh, that other thing, the rest of their life. Yeah. You're never yeah, going to grow it. unless you get over it. <laughs> I love it. I love that, that like you have to forgive yourself. We all make mistakes and you have to be accountable that you put yourself in that spot, whatever that spot may be. Even, mm-hmm. even if you're like, as, as soon as you turn 18, like you're, you got to take accountability. Like this is your life. You make the decisions. Don't go. My mom told me this. My dad said this. My grandma said that. Like, what did you say? what was your decision? Because <laughs> yeah. no one, no one's going to live your life for you. You have to live it yourself. <laughs> no. I mean, if you heard that old analogy, uh, um, assumptions are like, you know, uh, I'm not even going to say the word, but I mean, you just can't, you can't make excuses. Right. Yeah. And you can't assume. And just like you did, you very easily could have, when Peter refreshed the, <laughs> the link, you very easily could have been like, oh man, like can't believe I didn't get that job. I would have crushed that. Instead, you literally called him. He said no. And then you called him again and you told him, I'm not taking no. And he's like, all right, show up. Yeah. <laughs> like, people respect that dedication of like, what is wrong with that? I guess they really want it. Okay, show up. Give it a try. <laughs> like, I know. It's it's so funny that you say that. Like, um, you know, my daughter's... um. You know, me and my husband, uh, Brian, I'm in a, in a great relationship now. It's like, he's, he's the love of my life. He had three kids. I have one child. So we have four together. Um, and I'm trying to think where I was going with that. 
I got so caught up thinking about my husband that I didn't remember where I was going with that. Excuse me. Um, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Ba- basically, we were just discussing about how like you fought through with Peter and mm-hmm. through that you were able to get the job. Yeah. And I'm guessing uh, based on what you told me, your previous relationships weren't up to your standard. And as you rise as a person, you found someone to equally sit there in that standard because you can't be satisfied. Mm -mm. No, you can't. Definitely not. And, you know, I wish a lot of young people would would understand that you can't always blame others the rest of your life. Cause I, I know, like, I know what I did probably like up until like five, seven years ago, I still was blaming my parents for stuff. <laughs> and then like, I'm thinking to myself, like I'm looking at my daughter and like, she's, you know, 19 now. And I'm thinking, I bet she's been blaming me for stuff too. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm like, and this is like, after you <laughs> like achieved a, a material wealth and you're still in that mindset of like, Why'd they do that? Why'd they do that? <laughs> like, and I'm thinking they were like, they were like young when they had me. Like, why do I put so much pressure on them? That's not fair. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not fair. They were trying to get by themselves. They were just working as hard as you were and just trying to make it happen. Exactly. <laughs> and I, yeah, I think that's another reminder that like everyone, you should, you should tell your parents, thank you. Like, because yeah. a lot of the time it was a lot more stressful from their perspective than it was for yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you don't, you'll never understand the sacrifices that they made for you. And half the time you don't even know because you're like, they weren't home. That's because they had to pay for the bills. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the home you got. You like your home? You like your food? Like, mm-hmm. and, and I think we, it, it's very hard. Like, like you talked about earlier in the podcast where, you were able to hop in your daughter's perspective when she was eight, 10 years old. Sometimes you got to hop in your parents' perspective when you were just a kid, which is very difficult to do, but realize it's not easy. It, life is not easy, but you got to be accountable for it and you got to take ownership. And that's why it's so great that what Julie and Peter are doing with Partner Driven, where it's, if you want to get into real estate investing, we will help you and yeah. they will guide you. And they're, how can people reach you guys? Well, um, you can go to our website. Um, I don't know if that's going to be right here on the chat. Yeah, I'll put it all in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put it all in the show notes. Um, So you'll be able to go ahead and click that in the show notes. Um, Also, you can follow me on all the social media channels. And actually, I'd love for you to follow me. I need new friends. Um, (laughs) Like, I I have an abundance attitude. I could never have enough friends. So I would uh, love to connect with you on social media as well. Absolutely. And guys, since Julie offered, I would highly recommend meeting with Julie. She's an incredible person. We've had a great time getting to know each other. And it's just, uh, she's just in a very abundance mindset. No, it's going to help. And whether it's easy questions, no questions, whatever it is, she'll, she'll help you with all of it. Yeah. <laughs> this yep. has been if we don't know, we'll figure it out together, right? <laughs> Absolutely. This has been awesome, Julie. Is there anything you want to leave the audience with? Well, I mean, I just want to thank you for taking the time to uh, to listen to my story and uh, listen to Jordan. And, uh, you know, if you've got a dream to do something, I mean, life's, life's not getting any longer, right? Just step out and quit listening to people that have a negative attitude or, or that other mindset, right? Get around people that have that abundance mindset. It'll change. Absolutely. Your life. Absolutely. And just on top of that, what Julie just said, you just got to start no matter what it is. Julie started on the phones. Like you just got to start somewhere. So yep. it's not like she bought 10 houses and was like, I'm starting. No, she started yeah. on the phones. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, anything is possible and not where you got to remember that where you are today is not where you'll end up. If you don't want it to be, if you want to get intentional and change it, things can change. So thank you, Julie. I really appreciate the time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for reaching the end of the podcast for that. We'll give you a complimentary coaching session in the link below with Edwards consulting. Hope to see you there and have a great day and keep clocking in.